A coffee controversy is brewing tonight. A new shop in Los Feliz is calling itself Dumb Starbucks. 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 Dumb 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 Starbucks. Its origins and owner are a mystery. Elias Zacklin is the owner of Helio Cafe, a small coffee shop in East Hollywood, California, and he prides himself in doing things a little bit different. The atmosphere is very eclectic. Uh, you don't walk in and actually there's even not even a menu in my shop, um, and that's been done purposefully. But in a world where one company has practically perfected the coffee experience, going against the grain has caused Elias' shop to be empty. So I paid him a visit with a way for him to finally compete with the big players. The problem with you is you have great coffee, but just no one knows what this place is. Correct. No one, you don't have a brand that people recognize. Absolutely. But maybe there's a shortcut to actually having brand recognition using a little something called parody law. Parody law. Often used by artists like Weird Al Yankovic and shows like Saturday Night Live, parody law allows you to use trademarks and copyrighted material as long as you're making fun of them. So if Elias could find a way to make fun of Starbucks, he'd be free and clear to borrow their valuable corporate name and image for his store. The plan? Turn the Helio Cafe into the world's first parody Starbucks. So how do you make that a parody without it, you just not mimicking their brand. Like the coffees could be dumb grande, dumb venti, gotcha. dumb frappuccino. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, as a whole, the store could just be called dumb Starbucks. Right. That's okay. I see what you're saying. Right. But the dumb could be small so people could come in thinking it's an actual Starbucks. Huh. It's smart. I just don't know if people would, would get it. You know, I don't know if people are, you know. Well, do people get what you're doing now? You're not that popular. Right. You have no menu. That's true. I mean, what do you have to lose by trying? I mean, what do I have to lose? I... I don't know, actually. Elias was on board, but he did have one major concern. I definitely could not afford a lawsuit from Starbucks. <laughs> definitely not. Based off what I read on Wikipedia, it seemed like my approach was legal. But just to be sure, I retained the services of attorney Peter J. Marks to guarantee we were protected. Dumb Starbucks. But the dumb would be smaller, so people would still think it's a Starbucks. If people think it's a Starbucks, you've got a problem. It's not really a parody then. Apparently my legal footing wasn't as solid as I thought, but then Peter brought up one way I could cover myself. Let's say you had a reputation as being uh, and, yeah. uh, someone who does lots of parody. Then they know, oh, he's just making fun of Starbucks because this is what he does. So I have to become a parody artist. It wouldn't hurt. It seemed like I still had some work ahead of me, but before leaving, I needed to be sure I was protected. So if I do all this, then Starbucks can't sue me. This is America. People file lawsuits at the drop of a hat. But if they sue, you're liable too, right? Who's liable? You. Me personally? Yeah. Not unless I'm involved in, 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 viola in infringing their trademark, no. Yeah, the appearance release you signed before had a clause that said you would be liable too if Starbucks sued. I don't agree to this at all. I do not agree to pay all legal fees and damages for legal action because I have no control over what's being released. I well, why did you sign that then? Yeah, I signed it, and I signed it because I didn't have a chance to read it, and I but thought... But you're a lawyer. Just, don't you read things before you sign them? I do read things. I try to read things, but you wanted me to shoot, and I glanced at it, and this was my mistake. I'll acknowledge that. Okay. Well, um, you, you signed it, so I guess you can give well, it back. Well, I'm, I'm not going to give it back because I'm going to... Well, um, I handed it to you just to look over, but you already... No, I'm not going to give it back to you. I'm protecting myself and, frankly, you from a nightmare. Well, you signed it. That, you, yeah. We have you on camera signing it, you, so it's still holds up in court. You don't have me on camera signing it. Yes, if, we do. What kind of lawyer am I? I'm signing shit I haven't read. Well, if you do, that's fine. Then, you, then you'll know how the terms... I, I'm going to put in my pocket. Well, um, no, we don't want it in your pocket. I, we do want it in my pocket. Please. Please. You're in my office. I'm very serious. And I don't know if you're really trying to do this just for the show, but I'd like to get off my desk and I'm going to ask you to leave the office. I was disappointed that Peter was trying to back out of the deal he signed, but our producers were eventually able to calm him down enough to keep shooting. They, they just said they need to get a shot of the, an insert of the document, like a shot no, of it before. It's staying, it's staying in my pocket. It's not going anywhere. Well, we need to get a, just a shot of the clause for the scene I, I, in the document. You can hold on to it. Just hold it out like you'd had and then, yeah. This okay. camera needs to get it out here. Okay, that's how oh, I had it. And then you can... 
Just make sure you get an insert of the actual. You know, I'm, I'm about to, I don't know if you're provoking me or not, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm getting tired of this. I'm not gonna be responsible for your conduct, okay? My plan to have Peter share liability didn't work.